visualization or wear the glove, you will not touch your patient during inspection. Just inspect your patient from the feet side, okay? From and pay attention on the normal breathing pattern, okay? So in in male patient, the abdominal part will bulging out in in during normal breathing. During normal breathing, the abdominal part will be up and down because male mainly breathe with the abdomen. In case of female, the thoracic part will breathe in up and down. Okay, so it move up and down during normal breathing. If suppose this reverse, suppose the abdominal breathing reverse in male to the thoracic. So what what will be? It means that the space that has been uh, reserved for normal breathing, it already occupied by some fluid, like in case of ascites. Okay, like in case of ascites, it already occupied, and now the patient breathing with the chest. Okay, the patient the patient breathe reverse to the chest because there is no space in the abdomen. Because the space that occupy and that, that reserve for normal breathing has been occupied, then in this situation the breathing pattern reverts to the thoracic breathing. When you see in male patient, so think about some 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 carcinoma. <coughs> think about hepatosplenomegaly. Think about ascites. So there is, are many things, many wide differential diagnoses and uh, investigate okay you will find after further investigation because this is not enough just in and in, in physical examination to 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 diagnose the patient we have laboratory investigation okay also laboratory investigation so after the laboratory investigation you will put the final diagnosis but this is your finding you must note the normal pattern of male breathing okay male mainly breathe with abdomen and female mainly breathe with chest thoracic okay so the patron of male is called abdominal thoracic patron of breathing and the patron of female is called thoraco abdomen okay or you can simply say abdomen breathing and thoracic breathing okay was it difficult okay so in female if this reverse so there will be some carcinoma this is uh, the, the the breast cancer this is most common cancer okay. and uh, maybe there is some some mass in mediastinum or some lymph node increase in size or some other thing that occupy the breathing space and reverse that breathing pattern to the abdomen so if the female patient breathe with the abdomen, then think about this, something wrong with the thoracic or mediastinum. Then ask the patient to breathe as much he can in and out. And, and, and pay attention on the symmetry, okay? Pay attention on the symmetry. If the movement on one side decreases and the other is normal, so think about some consolidation like occur in pneumonia mm -hmm. or hypersensitivity pneumonitis or other diseases. Okay, we have a list of diseases that compromise the normal function of respiratory system. Okay, that compromise the normal function of respiratory system. Suppose over here. We have uh, the movement of respiratory system has been reduced. Okay, suppose it reduced. Okay, and we have consolidation. Can you sit, sit up? And, okay, by doing this, what is the purpose of doing this? When the patient do this, the scapula bulging out. Okay, and now. We are going for applied anatomy.
to find out the lower limit of respiratory system. Okay. So usually it will be at the 10 thoracic vertebra. Okay. And it's moving during normal breathing between the 10th and 10th, 10th vertebra and 12th vertebra. So, so now the question is that how to find out the 10th thoracic vertebra? Because this is live patient. In a live patient, we are not able to cut this and see, yeah, this is. 10th vertebra or 11th vertebra. Okay, so we have two methods, and this is called surface anatomy or applied anatomy. When you are in clinical career, you will apply during physical examination the applied anatomy or clinical anatomy or surface anatomy. So it will help with the most. Okay, so now I'm going to find out that. 10th uh, vertebra. Why I'm going for this? Because the normal, the normal individual, the lower limit of lung parenchyma, it is up to 10th vertebra. Up to 10th vertebra. Okay. So how to find, once you find the scapula, okay, the lower angle of scapula, lower angle of scapula, it lie at the Seventh rib. In under the seventh rib, we have the seventh intercostal space. And now, eight intercostal space. Now you can go space to space. Okay, this is eight, this is nine, and this is ten. And ten corresponding to the tenth vertebra. So now, this is the lower limit of the respiratory system. Okay, this is the lower limit of the respiratory system. And it moves between twelve. Thoracic vertebra and 10 thoracic vertebra during normal breathing. During normal breathing. So once you you find, because most respiratory parenchyma it lies on the posterior side. Okay, mostly it lies on the posterior side. Once you understand that, that this is 10th vertebra, so mark that. Okay, mark that. Because we have many procedures during physical examination to do. Okay. And we need this lower limit of the respiratory system. We will check this patient for uh, lung mobility. So for that, we need to be this vertebra, uh, mark this vertebra, okay? Okay, don't use all the time the scapula and all the time intercostal space. Once you find, you mark that, okay? Once you find, you mark that. It is enough, okay? So now, pay attention on the normal curvature of the vertebral column. Because in, uh, you will, in your clinical hope, one day you will be in your clinic and clinical practice, you will find a patient with respiratory failure that has kyphosis and scoliosis. Because Alteration in anatomy also causes respiratory failure. Alteration in normal anatomy also causes respiratory failure. And who will tell me what is kyphosis? When the thoracic curvature increases posteriorly, it, it looks like letter K. Okay? So it, it looks like letter K. When it increases posteriorly and it posture become like this. Okay, this is bi uh, bigger posture. Okay, it become like this. It also compromise the normal breathing pattern. Okay, it also compromise the normal breathing. Okay, and uh, sometimes the vertebral column bend on one side or on other side. Okay, bend on right side or left side. So it look like a shape. That's why the name this condition scoliosis. Okay, in some patient you will find both this abnormality. So keep a scoliosis. You can say that. Okay, or just say just write down scoliosis and kyphosis as well. 
Okay? You combine this word, hyposcoliosis, or you just write down kyposis or scoliosis. Both are present. And uh, this patient will have end with, ended with the respiratory failure due to extreme deformity and the uh, thoracic cage. Okay? Because it, it will not keep able, okay, to breathe well. And its oxygen concentration uh, will decrease more than 90. Okay? If you, you will not able to breathe, so definitely the, the oxygen. And this situation, we call it respiratory failure. So the end stage of this deformity is respiratory failure. And you know that. Okay? Then come to the lumbar part okay so this is lumbar region and we have lumbar curvature that convex forward okay this convex forward okay can you sit like straight okay so here we have the lumbar curvature and it increasing in two situations in two situations it increases once in pregnancy to compensate the big weight of abdomen so this mud must increases on interiorly okay this must increase on the interior side okay because of the big abdomen weight okay so to bear weight and to compensate all this situation so the lumbar curvature increases interiorly have you got it Okay, now this is physiological because uh, every female must have this situation. But in some fit individual also occur this, this kind of situation with the big abdomen. Okay, so what is the difference between big abdomen in female and big abdomen in male? So the same thing occur. Okay, the same thing occur in those individual who has a big abdomen to compensate this the big weight okay large weight of abdomen he has to be he has increases this curvature interiorly okay and this is abnormal when it increases interiorly okay within uh, when increases interiorly okay now ask the patient to breathe normally and uh, pay attention on the scapula, okay. In normal breathing, the scapula must moving up and laterally, okay, during inspiration and moving down and medially during expiration, okay. So can you breathe forcefully in and out for me? One more. So. Yeah, this is normal, okay? This is normal because it's scapula moving up and somehow literally, okay? Then during expiration, it moving in and down, okay? So this is normal movement of respiration and you must pay attention on the lower and hold asymmetry. If there is asymmetry, one side is more moving is compared to other side or on our one side is less moving is compared to other side so think about pneumonia okay or hypersensitivity pneumonitis pneumonitis or any uh, abnormal lump okay any previous surgery scar okay any previous surgery scar so it you can find out okay during inspection Okay, but don't touch the patient during inspection. Okay, you have just to observe things. Okay, like that. You you can ask the patient to do so. Okay, so this way the scapula bulging out, and when the scapula bulging out, you will be able to see this during forceful breathing, the movement of scapula, and you will find out the lower angle of scapula because this is surface marked okay this is anatomical landmark 
from where we can go to the tenth rib, tenth, tenth intercostal space and tenth thoracic vertebra. Okay.